deciding on the, the questions to ask, you need to establish whether your qualitative research will be inductive or deductive. So by deductive, I mean the testing of theory. And yes, qualitative research can include this testing of theory concept um, or inductive, which is the development of uh, theory. Once you've done that, you can start to build a framework for your questions. OK, let's uh, start with the uh, deductive approach. Now, um, you before you do any of these uh, approaches, you need to set yourself a, um, a research objective or a research question or a set of objectives and a set of questions. We'll just start with uh, uh, one uh, for now. Because you're doing a deductive uh, approach, you need to incorporate the theory that you are focusing on within that question or objective. So it could be something like um, uh, you wanting to find out why an individual elected to uh, enrol on a marking degree at Leeds Beckett University using Ajahn's theory of planned behaviour. So you're, you're testing, um, if you like, the theory or you're digging deeper into why an individual is using it, using the framework of the theory of planned behaviour um, as, uh, as the, the structure for, for your questions. Just as an aside, um, if you're going to embark on something like this, you need to make sure your sample frame includes individuals who have enrolled on the course and who haven't. Um, ideally, all those individuals will be um, or will have been at a university, whether it's Leeds Beckett or a another, and then you can get the differences between the the, the two. Now, this uh, theory of hand behaviour is made up of five elements, five latent variables, five factors. Call it what you like. Uh, they're made up of uh, attitude, subjective norms, perceived behaviour control, intention, and behaviour. So the, the questioning that you will ask will be based uh, around those those elements. I, I, let's start with um, uh, behaviour. So I could start by asking um, uh, a participant, did you enrol on a marketing course at Leeds Beckett University? Now, you want to try, usually, uh, to not ask questions that the participants can simply say yes or no. But in this case, it was around a specific behaviour, which is, did you enrol in it? Yes or no. You, um, so I'm happy for uh, that to, um, to be the, the case. You then might you supplement it with further questions as to why or what was it about. But actually, that you have to be careful there because that might be part of your um, further questioning which you uh, want to use in the semi-structured interview. So you always have to plan this out. So that, that first question might be good enough to leave it as one without any uh, additional questions to support it because actually you'll, you'll get the, the details later on. Now using the framework, we as we mentioned, we've got attitude, uh, subjective norms, etc. So let's go back to attitudes. So we want to ask a question around uh, attitudes. So it could be something like, uh, what were your thoughts and feelings about Leeds Beckett University when you applied for the course that you are now attending? And that leaves it open to those who attended uh, and those who didn't attend because you're trying to get uh, a perception of those who went to a different university and did they have any feelings about Leeds Beckett or, or, or not. So the answer that the individual will give you will cover both um, sets of um, uh, participants in terms of they've been to the, the university and they haven't. The answers that they, uh, they give you, you should then think of two or three, as I mentioned, to um, get a deeper understanding of the process. Now, um, let's move to the subjective norm. So this is all about family and friends. Uh, so we could make a question up like, uh, what were your family and friends' thoughts of Leeds Beckett University when you applied for the course that you are now attending on? So again, this uh, uh, question is open to those who are at Leeds Beckett University and those who are at other universities because we're trying to get an idea about um, was it uh, someone in the family who said no you can't go there or was it someone in the family who said yep do, do go there. 
um, and the answer that you would get will hopefully give you an opportunity to delving in a bit deeper and finding out a bit more. Let's, let's move on to uh, perceived behavior control. Um, so a question could be something like, um, when you started the process of applying for university places, were you aware of Leeds Beckett University and what they had to offer? So you'll notice here, unlike um, quantitative questions where there shouldn't be any ambiguity about um, uh, uh, double barrel questions, you can uh, incorporate double barrel questions in the semi-structured interview process because the answer that they give you um, can be challenged or um, reviewed in, in some more detail with the further questions that you're, you're going to answer because they're essentially I've asked two questions and that was were they aware uh, of Leeds Beckett and what they had to offer uh, but th using double barrel questions is not a problem in the qualitative process and then finally we get on to intention uh, let's now look at uh, intention so a question could be you are now studying at XXX, where XXX is either Leeds Beckett University or another university, uh, and you would have picked this up uh, in the introduction process and the sign up of the consent form, so ideally you would have tailored the question uh, accordingly. So we'll go back to that. Uh, you're now studying at XXS. Was this your first choice or did you change your mind? So this is the intention uh, element. We're trying to get a picture of um, uh, no, they were fixed all the way through or something happened that made them change their mind. And um, you, when you're asking your supplementary questions, you will be d digging deeper to, s to try and find out what, what that might be. So that uh, is uh, the um, uh, using a theoretical framework. So we've got five elements there. Now, um, the first one, I've, I've said that we're just going to have the one question. The other four... Um, I was would supplement it with between two and three further questions. So um, you've got, uh, let's say, three, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, uh, and then the, the, the fifth one, the, the, the final one, se uh, 17 questions that you're going to ask. So you uh, times that by between one and three minutes, it gives you an idea of how long it will take. So you can see that the, the process of uh, uh, developing the questions shouldn't be that onerous. And if you use a theoretical framework, it does help you a lot uh, in terms of identifying what you, you want to ask. 